Okay, so I finally watched Hometown Cha Cha Cha, and it was great, y'all. Hometown Cha 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 was the perfect show that I needed to watch right now. I was kind of in a funk. I didn't really want to watch anything I chose on my watch list recently. I wasn't in a scary October fall creepy mood for TV shows that usually I am, and I was kind of just like not wanting to watch anything. I, I just wasn't in the mood <laughs> recently even on my watch list. So this show, I saw a clip on YouTube and it piqued my interest and it was on Netflix. So I was like, let me give this a try. And this is exactly what I needed to get me out my little funk that I was in. So as I said before, the YouTube clip definitely caught my interest, but there was a lead actor in it who I originally saw in the startup. And that was the reason I really wanted to catch this TV show. In the startup, he was like one of the guys in the love triangle and i thought he deserved so much better i didn't love how kind of like where his character ended too much or i thought you know he deserved more of a chance in that tv show with the romance and he didn't get what i thought he deserved so i was glad to see that he was the lead actor in this romance on netflix and that he got what he deserved you know i just like second chance i loved it so that was really intrigued me on this show seeing him in it and seeing the clip that i saw on youtube really piqued the interest and ultimately gave me the perfect show to get me out this funk that I've been in. So as always, I'll start with the general synopsis of the TV show. And then when um, I'm done, we will get into spoiler territory. So you can definitely leave when that comes up. But yeah, once we get into anything that could potentially be a spoiler you don't want to know more about, I'll let you guys know. But then we'll get into more detail on the TV show and what I thought. So as I said before, Hometown Cha 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 is a romance. It's mostly like an opposites attract two completely different people somehow come together. So we have the lead actress, she lives in the city and she's a dentist. And then we have the lead actor, he lives in a small town and he's like a jack of all trades, he does everything. She ends up moving to that small town he's in to start a new career path or to start a new adventure, you know, start a new direction for her career. And this is where they meet. Do they get along at first? Absolutely not, they don't. But then we just see them coming closer together and seeing feelings developed and it's just great. I loved watching their story unfold. Besides the two lead actors, we also have some other love stories intermingled into there which are super duper cute and a little bit emotional sometimes. And we also have the wonderful small town that they both are living in and I love all the town people, the characters in that. It's just they all have different kind of like sh smaller side stories you see and it's just great to just see them and interact with them see how they interact with each other and all the love that they do and they all support each other they're all together they're all one family most of them have been there their entire lives and lived in that town so it's really cool to see all of them come together and support each other whenever someone needs help so yeah that's the general synopsis of the tv show um opposites attract romance two people completely different towns lives and they come together so that's kind of where i'm going to stop with the general synopsis so if that interests you definitely go check the show out um now we're gonna get into more spoilers so if you want to go watch the tv show and not know what anything's about that's fine but if you don't care we're gonna get into more um detail of the tv show so definitely after you watch it you can come back or we can keep on going as i said before um the main actress she works in the city so she's actually a dentist and we see her in her job in the city. She lives in a nice apartment, has a nice job. Like she makes her own money. She's an independent woman. We love her, you know? So we see her in her lifestyle and then we see her go to work and she is a dentist. And a lot of people think dentists kind of do unnecessary procedures, scare the dentist, think they try to charge you more money. And she isn't like that. She will prescribe you what she thinks is the best for you and try to, what is your range and would cost you the least amount of money in the long term so she has this client that she ends up meeting in person and then her client comes to her and she suggests a certain procedure which not would not be too much money and the client is very very happy about that but then her boss is like no you should do this procedure she's like no because that'll cost more money and she doesn't need it this is better for her and it's more affordable so her boss is like i'm gonna take your client and i'll take care of her from now on she doesn't like that so she decides to quit. She's like, I'm not gonna be doing this. I'm not gonna be charging people all these procedures for extra money they don't need. And I know that you do that with all your clients and I'm not gonna let this happen to her. So she ends up quitting because she has a certain moral compass and she doesn't feel like people should be taken advantage of when they're unaware of what services they need. So she quits and she leaves her job and that is great and all, but then the next morning she wakes up 
and she realizes she when she was drunk she posted something on like a dentist website a forum whatever saying how her dentist her boss um treats her patients and charges them all this stuff this that and she kind of gets like ostracized from the dentist community um people don't want to hire her she applies to so many jobs within the city no one wants to hire her because they saw that she posted this and she kind of messed up this for herself because she publicly outed her boss and other people are like, well, will she do that to us? They don't trust her. Um, if she can do that to her boss now, like, what will she do to us? So people don't want to be associated with her. So her boss is like, I saw what you posted. You're never going to be able to work in the city again. So she's really distraught. She's like, I have no job. I'm not going to be able to get a job in the city where I live. And she loves, she loves working in the city. She loves living in the city. So she's kind of really sad and doesn't know what to do with her life. Well, it is her mother's birthday soon and her mother had passed away. So she decides to go to this small town where she, um, her family had visited when her mother was still alive. And it was like one of the happier memories she has of her family when her mother was still alive. So she decides to go there and she sits on the beach and just sits on, out in the water thinking about her mother. And this is where she meets our lead actor. Yes, Chief Hong. Um, she meets him and let's say they don't get off on the right foot. <laughs> Um, they don't like each other. At first, they like they don't really have an opinion on each other too much, but as they start interacting a little bit, they don't really like each other. They kind of complete opposites. They realize and like, no, don't want to deal with each other really. Keep their interactions minimal. So while she is in this small town, as I said, she keeps meeting him, but things keep happening where she like can't get out of this small town she's in for the day. First, her car breaks down, and then she goes to get some coffee and she doesn't have any cash on her. So she has to pay with car, but then all the, the electricity went out. So she can't even call, can't get any money, can't call anyone, a mechanic or anything. So she's kind of like stuck in this town because she has no physical cash on her and she only has her card. So when all this is happening, she, she keeps bumping into Chief Wong, our main lead actor. And he like helps her out when she, he can. It's like the town is not wanting her to leave, kind of. Like things keep happening to keep her in that town. And then um, she realizes there's no dental clinic in this town. Like the closest one is like about an hour away. And so she gets the idea to open up her own business, her own dental clinic in this small town. She can't get a job in the city anymore. So she's like, this is what I'm gonna do. It'd be a lot cheaper to open a clinic here than in the city, it's significantly less. So she's gonna try it out here. And that is where our main story, I feel like it starts kicking off and begins. So yeah, she opens up a dental clinic in this small town, but she doesn't get off on the right foot with everyone. She's kind of used to city living and these people are not used to that and they're in a small town and they don't mesh well, like her with the town, the people with her. They do try, they're really interested in her, want to learn more about her, but she's kind of standoffish, doesn't really want to talk to everyone. You know, she's like set in her ways. That's how she used to live in the city. In the town, it's kind of different. The people are a little bit, when they first get to meet you, a little bit more friendly and they always they want to know so much about you hang out with you and all this stuff and she's not really that type of person which is nothing not bad they just didn't mesh well and they kind of saw her as being rude and not wanting to get to know them and also there's some embarrassing and hurtful events that happen that might also sway them that she didn't like them as well she started off the wrong foot with the town and a lot of people didn't like her and her clinic was not doing well because no one went to go to her clinic because they didn't like her and kind of didn't trust her eventually with the help of the chief the town starts to get to know her more begin to trust her a little bit more and she starts getting clients to come to her clinic which she is so so happy about she realizes like this town is more of a family um there's certain things she needs to do to gain their trust and to get to know them more more. and so she does those things too because she's now part of this town and become one of the people i love watching these two main characters fall in love it was amazing we see them first not really like each other and then we do see them kind of grow into a friendship and then that friendship grows into more and it was amazing just to see where that relationship and their connection was going i enjoy seeing that they both have feelings for each other but they kind of try to deny it which I'm like, why, why deny it? Just go for it. But you know, not everyone's like that. So yeah, there are points within the show where you're like, oh, there's a connection. They like each other, you know it, but then they try to stand back from those feelings and don't want to go towards it. They end up liking each other. But one of my favorite, um, one of my favorite parts was when they made it official and like proclaimed their love for each other. So she came back from visiting the city and she was like, I realized I love you. And I wanted to tell you all this. And then he's like, I couldn't hold it any longer and he loved her too and I was like 
who wrote this because it was amazing i loved it literally my heart was just oozing feelings i loved it it was so cute just to see them um say their feelings to one another so after that they kind of like you know their boyfriend and girlfriend and they were super happy they were so adorable and so cute i just loved seeing them in love but then they didn't want to tell everyone they kind of wanted to keep it for themselves they didn't want people to gossip about them well mostly she didn't want people to gossip about them so she kind of wanted to keep it to themselves for a little bit so she's like we're gonna just pretend like we d we're not in a relationship and we don't like each other so no one talks about us my second favorite episode because it was so funny like they were like so lovey like so lovey dovey on each other and then when anyone came by she like hit him or knocked him out or like slapped him she's like how dare you and everyone's like what's going on she's like ah He's just so annoying, like he's always annoying, like trying to play it off like she doesn't like him. And so then the town's like, we're gonna keep y'all apart because you keep hurting him, we're not gonna let this happen. And I was literally, I, I, I'm like, this dude, poor, the cheap, poor guy. He kept getting kicked, punched, slapped by her because she was like, oh, we, you know, we can't let people know we like each other. And I feel bad for him. But eventually the town's like, oh, we knew y'all liked each other and y'all were faking it. We're just gonna see how long it took you guys to eventually tell us that you were a thing. I was like, the town, they smart. They put them through that torture so they would know that truth but yeah those are one of my favorite episodes when they professed their love for each other and then when they were like trying to hide their relationship it was so funny i loved it so yeah eventually they told everyone the truth and everyone was so happy for them the town loves both of them and they're happy to see them together like i said they're a huge huge family the chief he doesn't have any other living family members she has her father and stepmother but he doesn't have any living blood relatives so it's just him a lot of the town's always there for him when he needs it so now they're in love and everything's great but throughout the show we kind of know that there's a secret around the chief no one really knows what it's about all they know is that when he was gone for five years something happened and when he came back he was very different distraught he walked around like a zombie kind of and then eventually he got it better to where he is now so we do realize that when he was when he left the town he went into the city he went to school there and he got a job at I believe like um, an investment firm. So they, ugh, I don't know the correct term for it. So I apologize. Like people put their money in their funds, investments. So you can make more money or like um, the stock market can crash and you just lose all your money, things like that. So that's what I know to equate it was. I don't know the exact term, so I do apologize about that. But he worked at a company like that because his college roommate worked in that company and ended up helping him get a job there. So he was excited to work there and he was really good with numbers and so it kind of worked for him. But then we find out what actually happened in that time, that five years work, going to college, working that company, what caused him so much pain. So the secret ends up coming out because someone finds out who his real name is and it turns out his father was affected by the chief. He kind of caused. So what had happened was this guard that worked at the company kept asking the chief he's like hey you know i want to invest in one of your funds i hear that yours gets a lot of money like people get make a lot of money from investing in your funds so apparently he kept saying no no i don't think you should do it but the guy was like no no i really want to i want to earn some more money for my family you know my son's going to school has tuition and i want him to get a new suit for a job interview i want to buy my wife a really nice house things like that he really wanted to make more money to just support his family and give them things that they deserved. So then the chief's like, okay, okay, I'll do it. Here's my card, here's the information. You can put money into that. I wouldn't say do too much, you know, be cautious, be smart about it. So he was trying to really help him. He didn't want him to go into this fund because it was very high risk. And he didn't want him to put too much money into it as well because of the high risk. So one day the fund that he was in charge of, it kind of crashes and people begin losing their money. And the guard put a lot of money into that fund, more than he should have. And I put money into that fund. I took money from my house. I put like, I put it into there. I don't, what, what's gonna happen? And the chief's like, I don't know, like, why did you do that? Kind of like, you shouldn't have done that. But he's like, we'll figure everything out. Just, you know, don't do anything right now. Wait till the dust settles and then everything will be okay and I'll help you out. So inside the building, the office building, people are going crazy. Like, you know, they're running around trying to figure out what's going on, trying to fix things because people are calling them because they're losing money. They're trying to fix everything. So the, the guard keeps calling the chief while he's working, but he decides not to pick up. He's like, you know, kind of like, oh, I'll hand it later. I have things to do now mentality. And then later that night when he's like work days over, someone comes up to him. He's like, did you hear what happened to our security guard? He tried to commit suicide. The chief felt 
absolutely terrible because he's like, you know, if I just answered his call, if I just didn't give him the information about this fund, none of this would happen. So he starts kind of having a panic attack and he's like, this is all my fault, you know. He starts freaking out and he goes straight to his car. He's like, I'm like, he wants to drive and visit the, the guard because he feels so bad. He's like, I need to go visit him and see him in the hospital. So his friend, who he's been friends with since college, he's like, no, you can't drive right now. I'll drive you. And they end up getting in a car accident and his friend is the one that dies and he lives. All this is happening like within a day. And just seeing all this happen was so, so, so sad to see what he had went through. And you kind of see the way he is. So he feels like he caused this guard to commit suicide and then he loses his friend. And he also kind of feels like that his fault as well. Cause you know, if none of, none of this happened if it wasn't for him. That's kind of how he feels. And so he's in the hospital and then he's like kind of at his lowest low and he, goes to a bridge and he's deciding like what he's gonna do but then he gets a text from someone one of the older ladies from the small town and she's in the city she's like i really want to see you i brought food for you i haven't seen you so long how are you doing and that kind of saved him like after he got that text he was like i can't do it you know he's just sitting there on the bridge crying because he's just so much emotions through that whole entire day so it's really sad about the chief's story because he kind of believes every time he gets close to someone, he'll lose them. So that does become something. He's afraid to get close to this woman because he really, really cares about her and he doesn't want to get close to her because he believes he'll lose her or something will happen. And you can see why he thinks that because unfortunately in his life, everyone, he, a lot of people he, been he has been close to end up dying. So that was really sad. But once we see all that, and she finds out what really happened. She's like there for him. He tells her everything and she's like, this isn't your fault. None of this is your fault. And she's like, just let it out. Let your emotions out. I'm here for you, whatever you need. And like he does, he just lets it all out. He cries and she's there for him. He really needs someone just to be there for him, listen to him and say it's not his fault. And eventually he does talk to the son of the man. And he's like, you know, it wasn't your fault. We just needed someone to blame. And then he sees his best friend's wife and son and he's in almost he's in tears and i'm in tears as well and she's like i don't regret what i said that day because she was very emotional too when she lost her husband but you know she's like you need to live your life what would he say if he saw you like this right now so it was kind of like everything in the end he got the peace he needed he had a this weight lifted off him that he always had he's like i caused all this and i can't go back to the city in the end, I feel like that was what he really needed to move on in his life, which I'm super happy about. So yeah, after all that emotionalness, we see their love and how they're still together. The last few episodes were definitely the most emotional for me because I feel like the majority of all that that I just spoke about happened. So it was a lot. So even though this was a lighthearted show, there is some parts that are a bit emotional. But in the end, I feel like all of it was so good, so great. You did get a great in my opinion a happy ending i love seeing these two together i love seeing them fall in love i love seeing the whole town and the little love stories and little character stories as well i thought they were great but yeah so the show was like the perfect show i could watch right now i just needed a light romance and yeah it had a little bit emotional but to me overall it's a very light romance nothing super duper heavy in my opinion or not a lot of it and it was just perfect to get me out of this little funk i was in so this is a total of a 16 episodes it is on netflix and all episodes are coming on netflix originally it was coming out weekly episodes but all of them should be on netflix now but i really really enjoy this show i think if i had to rate it i would give it four stars i liked it a lot i would definitely rewatch the show again if i needed something to lift up my spirits and this would be something i would definitely suggest so if you want a show that is cute a romance nothing too dramatic i would definitely check this one out i think it's super cute and i definitely love the love story of this main character a lot better than his love story in the startup i think this one was so much better for him and i'm glad they he got like a, a redemption love in my opinion so if you have seen hometown cha 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 what did you think did you like the characters did you like the love story and how did you think about this relationship with with him versus the one in the startup. I would like to hear your opinions on that. I love this one better and I thought he had a better love story. On um, the startup, I didn't love how his character was. In my opinion, I think his character didn't have a chance. So I like this one better. And as always, I will be linking my website below. You can also find my my shorter review on that if you want to take a look at it. And I mentioned the startup a lot. So if you wanna hear my review for that one, definitely I'll link my blog post below for that and you can take 
check out that one. Let me know what you think. And if you want to know when any more videos go up or any other reviews, definitely subscribe to the channel so that you can be notified. And I'll put my socials below. I'm most active on Twitter. Anytime I upload a blog post, it'll also be on there as well. So you can go follow me on Twitter. But definitely um, any of my socials, you are free to go follow whenever anything is posted. So thank you guys so much. Oh, I didn't mention this in my past couple other videos, but we have officially reached 50 subscribers, which I am... Ah, just so excited about i think that's so cool that i got 50 i know to some people it might be a very very small number but to me i'm just very grateful that um this hobby that i'm doing is a lot of people are also enjoying it with me so i'm very very excited about that so thank you guys for 50 subscribers i really do appreciate it so i hope you enjoyed this review of hometown cha 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 and until next time bye